Almost December, as you see, it gets colder. Uh, I just drove around walking my dog uh, and coming back from the dog beach, and there was a guy. He had like a jacket on. On the back was kind of like a Hell's Angels kind of uh, emblem, like a logo. But it was the Facial Hair Club Vancouver, and the guy had like beard, like a long, long beard. And you see, like driving by. I recognized, I saw that guy again, he had another t-shirt with the same thing. So he basically runs around 24-7. Always make sure he has a kind of Hell's Angels thing in the back. Um, facial hair beard club Vancouver. So he represents something. He wants to show the world there's a deeper meaning in the facial hair. And I can tell him right now what the deeper meaning is. The deeper meaning is... You are a completely fucking retarded idiot focused on the completely absurd nonsense bullshit. And if you have long facial hair, it's unhygienic, it's gross, you look like a fucking retard and you are a fucking retard. That is what you are if you're a member of the Facial Hair Club Vancouver and if you actually run around and promote it like a fucking idiot and retard. It's so bad. I don't know what to say, you know, like there are so many idiots, they just focused on absurd things, like a woman. They drink red wine with a straw. And so, A, you destroy the wine like this, but that doesn't really matter. And you know why they do it? Because they bleach their teeth all the time and they don't want that the red wine touches their teeth and make it a little like less uh, whitening, less white, you know, so they suck it all down like whatever the fucking cum of the sugar daddies they have. I mean, I fucking cannot believe it. It's ridiculous, you know? So, I mean, like, uh, then don't drink red wine or g grow up being adult, you know? I mean, it's completely crazy. I'm looking forward to watch Creed, the new Rocky one. I will watch that, uh, I hope, tomorrow. And uh, one of the few movies I'm interested in. I just watched a movie with Ed Harris and Ethan Hawke, and so it's a gangster movie, and they all talk Shakespearean English the whole time. But it's a bloody gangster movie playing now, and it doesn't make any sense. It's horrific. I mean, it's so absurd to even try it and do it, only because in that one DiCaprio uh, movie, Romeo and Julia, they did it and tried it out. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's idiotic. So, I'm very, very busy preparing Rampage 3. We have the crew almost together. AD, grip, lighting, electrician, camera. Uh, I'm still negotiating with the gun guy and with special effect, but we get that done too. We locked in the locations. December 3 is D-Day. Then we start shooting uh, the final, final chapter. I mean, we started already in Washington DC, but that will be then the really like the final final chapter, no? So and um, yeah, of course, Hunger Games is a big hit worldwide. A little under the last Hunger Games, but it doesn't matter. It's the last episode, so it's not like oh, we're going down. We cannot keep going with the franchise. But I'm sure they whatever make some more Hunger Games movie out of the ass, but they will not get uh, Jennifer Lawrence again. And to be honest, in comparison with Twilight, Hunger Games was better. It was better to watch even for people like me. I mean, I hate all that movies, but it was overall the better movie, more, more interesting. Or Harry Potter or whatever. And now I'm looking forward. In one hour starts Klitschko, Tyson Fury, the boxing fight. I'm very curious who wins the fight. I think Klitschko will knock him out. But Tyson Fury never lost a fight so far. He's too slow for Klitschko. But he will try. He will try hard. I hope for it. And... Um, I think when Anthony Joshua finally fights Klitschko, that's the end of Klitschko's career. And a new era will begin, and that era will be Anthony Joshua, actually. Last week was Canelo Cotto, uh, Alvarez won. He maybe boxes now Golovkin. But Cotto did a good fight, overall it was good, but Cotto is just a little too small for 
a guy like Canelo, so he couldn't, he didn't have the body, basically, to really uh, bring him in massive in danger in that 12 rounds. And he, he won the last three fights he did with knockout, but Canelo is like a machine. And I'm tired. Our kid wakes us up at five o'clock in the morning. It's, uh, and I was, and then my wife got up and I kept sleeping, but I'm still tired. That is the problem. So, tonight I have to go in the restaurant. We we'll have a lot of bookings. Uh, now where December is, we are more and more full in the restaurant, what is good. So it's creating some additional um, money. After I spent a lot of money investing in it, I thought already, oh, I will never make my money back. I will never make any money on it. But now I'm more optimistic that if we keep going like this, that in three or four years I have my investment back. And then if we keep going, then I make my so, but it's three or four years before I get my money back, actually. Good. Bye. A father. A daughter. A mighty leader. She could be the end. Or the beginning of the world as we know it. A prophet. They have been talking for years that Kate was in search of a prodigious child. Where is she? <laughs> A young hero. What make us think that you won't attack? A guardian. A land ruled by evil. A secret society of Avengers. This is the headquarters of the Brimstone Society. Physical strength means nothing. I do not intend to stop fighting for a second. Will the world be ruled by light or darkness? I had to witness the beginning of the new era. Hello, here is Uwe Ball, another day in paradise. And uh, um, I just watched the first time American Sniper. I think it's a very, uh, very good movie. It doesn't show, uh, like, it doesn't criticize the Iraq war. What is a joke, of course. And it doesn't criticize also, basically, uh, the absurdity of uh, just going somewhere without a, a game plan, with, with, without a reason to be there in retrospective. So it, it cannot justify in any case uh, uh, or in any way um, the Iraq war. But it shows also how fucked up you get uh, if you do what, what he did. I mean, the movie shows, I think, very accurate that it has definitely a massive impact on your psychological situation to be, to do what, what the guy did, you know. So uh, interesting also that Sammy Shaikh uh, played the, as a sniper from the Iraqi side, and I'm sure Clint Eastwood saw him in my Darfur movie where he plays the Janjaweed boss, and he was so intense in the Darfur movie that uh, that was the best demo reel you can have, my movie basically, and I'm sure that that was the reason he got that job for, for that part. Uh, uh, I will actually ask him, uh, if still his email uh, address. And then I watched a few other movies. Um, the drop was Tom Hardy, a little slow, but a good ending, intense movie. And, uh, uh, but the best movie of the whole year I just watched, and that is the 100 years old who climbed out of, out of the window of a window and disappeared. Uh, it's a Swedish movie, was nominated for the Oscar Best Foreign Language Movie. An excellent movie. Funny like hell, a little like Forrest Gump. And you basically see that when he escapes out of the retirement home and he steals a, a money a suitcase from the Hells Angels and they try to get him. That is the story what goes on, but at the same time you see the flashbacks 
uh, uh, like his hundred years. He was involved in the atom bomb in the Spanish Civil War. He knows Stalin. He worked as a KJB and CIA agent. It is absolutely hilarious, uh, the movie. Uh, strongly recommended for me. A best movie uh, I watched the whole year. And then... Um, the other thing, uh, I mean, I watched so many movies the last uh, the last few days. Mostly were like just forgettable, and uh, you don't really have to watch them. Yeah, but it's uh, uh, it's good that there are like the the movie channels and, and Netflix and so on, where you basically can pick up all the movies you didn't uh, watch. Uh, uh, for a for a longer time, basically, you know, where you where you did where you otherwise would overlook that movies. Um, so I watched The Boy Next Door with Jennifer Lopez from the Bloomhouse production, the horror movie. I mean, it could be worse, but it was really a forgettable, not really a, a, a good movie. Then Blood Ties with Cliff Owen, a uh, nice movie, uh, f like kind of a, a 70s, 80s New York gangster drama, uh, uh, good to watch. The theory of everything. I mean, the guy got the Oscar playing uh, uh, Stephen Haw Hawkins uh, for a reason. I think it was uh, uh, a very uh, intense uh, acting. Not a surprising movie, but good that they, they made the movies. Only Lovers Left Alive, uh, catastrophically not really good. Lay the Favorite with Bruce Willis, also forget it. Outcast with Nicolas Cage and Hayden Christensen from my uh, uh, friend uh, uh, Nick Powell was a better movie with Nicolas Cage as he normally <coughs> is doing and um, I really can uh, uh, think it was a solid movie and Hayden Christensen was, was really good with it, the sword fighting was, was excellent and the Canadian big art house success Mummy about the guy who comes out of boarding school and in the end goes back to boarding school I think kind of stretched out uh, very over the top crazy you know how it's doing the drug abuse and whatever so i would not really say that was a great movie penthouse north with michael keaton totally forgettable forget it all chili does die is the same a good title and everything but not really uh, a movie you have to see the intruders very bad all the wilderness very bad before i go to sleep with with nicole kipman also a movie you can completely forget and so also reach me with sylvester stallone uh, uh and the Maze Runner I locked, looked and left behind with Nicolas Cage, so all movies uh, you don't really have to uh, you don't really have to watch. But the point is, when I'm sitting here on my desk, I watch a whole I watch a lot of movies uh, uh, every day, and so um, that is for me then another way to just consume what's going on in the movie industry and um, to get an overview of what gets shot. In a time when tyranny and black magic Darkness threatens either Threaten to destroy a kingdom Krug, savage arm Krug They fight like men Sorcery One man Tell me how you love me You know Must fight against the powers of darkness I'm changing the structures of the world. Your king needs you. Now my wife needs me if she lives. For his people. People say God watches over the earth. For freedom. I feel him. For love. In you. Tomorrow we march on Christwind Hold. I will have my vengeance. Fire! Run! Live! The King! Born as a human, reborn as a legend, he proves that courage can prevail over magic. In the name of the King, a dungeon siege tale. Life? It's never been so exciting. 
Ja, hier ist Uwe Ball. Hi. Oh, look at my T-Shirt. Somebody made for me. But Ball is B-O-L-L, not B-O-O-L. So I'm all excited shooting Rampage 3 soon. Very busy with the preparations. And uh, we'll shoot in a big winter, basically here in Vancouver. But it will be very good. I mean, interesting, you know, like there were like Adam Smith and John Maynard Kane were the biggest economy uh, visionaries on the planet. And if you think about it, Adam Smith says, we're all egoists and we're all basically, uh, we drive the, the world forward with our egoism and the greed, basically. And he saw it's a good thing, you know? And if you think about it, all the engines and the airplanes and the electricity and the coal and whatever we take out of the bottom of the world, it all started only 160, 170 years ago at the Industrial Revolution. And we actually made it that the million years old Earth was in basically in the end 200, 220 years of industrial revolution and economic growth will extinct us. And we're all dead. So in, in, in 180 years, we created basically from the fucking farms that were there and nothing else. We created from the telephone to the internet, to the TV, to the, the railways, to the subways, to, the, to everything. We created it all, we moved it forward. And we had an explosion of people on earth and an explosion of industry on earth and an explosion of military conflicts on earth. And within 220 years, we all fucked it up and went under. And now it's only waiting for the ice melt and we all got in, getting flooded away by hurricanes, uh, tsunamis, the ocean rise will be 10 meters. Now as in Paris is still the, the climate conference without any results since three, four days I hear nothing. And then they will say in the end of Paris, we all agree we have to put the CO2 down, but to save the earth, the earth we had to actually stop 25 years ago to driving any cars or flying any airplanes. And John Maynard Keynes was the guy who said, uh, no, we need to see the overall things happening in the world and we have to share and distribute wealth different or we will have too many poor people and only a few rich people like Monopoly who owns everything and exactly this happens. Uh, so basically if you keep playing Monopoly in the very end all the money is with one person and everybody else is dead and that is what we're moving forward to and uh, it's so sad to see that, you know, that during our lifetimes we acknowledge and watch the downfall of the civilization. And as more people are aware of the helpless uh, situation we are in and the no future generation we are in, um, as more you will see the, the violence, terrorism, domestic terrorism. But to summarize that up, that is the problem we are in. It's, it's an unsolvable problem. That is the big problem. <coughs> that we fucked it already up and we cannot stop it anymore. We can only try to enjoy the actual day we are in, be a little more aware of the environment, but it's drops in the bucket and the bucket is already the coffin and we are all dead. Tja. Now you know why Rampage 3 will be my last movie, because it doesn't make any sense anymore.
yeah, uh, San Bernardino shooting three people, 15 people shot, whatever. And uh, yesterday I watched Requiem for the Dead, American Spring 2014 documentary on HBO about like the over 30,000 people per year getting shot with guns in US. Uh, a lot of them by accident or just people overreacting and it shows again also now the San Bernardino shooting that uh, the American NRA and the Congress are out of their fucking minds. To, to keep the gun law how it is, is the most ridiculous crime on earth and that's an NRA, uh, uh, the National Rifle, uh, Rifle Association, everybody with a brain should step out of that organization if the president of the organization says uh, even terrorists have the right to buy guns. Uh, then he is a criminal and the boss of the NRA should get uh, in jail. You know, it's completely, absolutely uh, ridiculous. That HBO doku dramatically, dramatically showed how many people, basically, uh, because guns are available, uh, are flipping completely out and uh, over, just overreacting, you know. And that is the thing, what is so unbelievable, uh, uh, over the top, uh, ridiculous, is you have, because the people don't lock up their guns, you have kids shooting kids. You have people, they're, they're getting a little jealous in a relationship and shooting everywhere. And I'm right now on the NRA website here, and it's like completely fucking uh, absurd, you know. Uh, politics and legislation era foundation increase concealed carry in dangerous times uh, it, it, it is unbelievable you know it is it is really uh, uh, unbelievable and that uh, the guy uh, the boss of the, the NAA uh, is just uh, completely out of his fucking mind you know how can you not be if you are a gun owner uh, how can you not, in any case, be being uh, okay with background checks and to make it a little uh, better uh, for for the people? And uh, on the other hand, it shows, of course, where we are with Rampage Three uh, shooting it. It's uh, it hits the nail on the head because it is just unbelievable. If you think about it, all the facts, right now is also in Paris, the climate conference. The facts are the world goes under. We use the resources and the ice is melting. The climate change cannot be stopped. Uh, you know, and like they're sitting in Paris and making some uh, idiotic, uh, whatever, whatever, like let's drive less cars or whatever, you know. All experts say 20 years ago, we had to stop flying airplanes and driving any cars to stop the climate change. So now to say, let's have a few more electro cars on the, on the streets, it's just a drop in the bucket. It doesn't bring anything. I mean, it's good that we do it, but it's only delaying the, uh, the downfall of the civilization a little longer. So our kids will not die old in bed. That is the fact. And uh, I think based on the facts, don't be surprised if you have more and more domestic terrorism. Don't be surprised if it gets all completely out of control on that planet. Because if you know you die, why you shouldn't shoot everybody? I mean, that is the absurd thing, you know, but it shows like in a way for me that massive, massive avalanche on shootings, especially in the USA, shows like the rich getting richer, the poor getting poorer, people are unhappy, nobody takes care of the people, nobody takes care of the veterans, and the people don't get answers to their questions. And they people, the people don't feel represented by the government and by the politics at all. And uh, don't forget, like 40% of Americans, the majority of Americans, are not in any party. Like over 50% are actually not in any party, and, and over 50%, almost 30-40% don't even vote. Because there is nothing for them to vote. It's only like uh, cancer or heart attack. You can pick one. You know, it's 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 completely absurd, and we have to change it. We let you in from here. Once inside, you're on your own. 
Should the virus propagate, it would be the end. Place the bomb and get out. So what brings you here, Chief? It didn't look like one of us. I'm here for my daughter. We go in, we drop the bomb, we get out. We forget about this place. The airport is close. We still have enough time to get to it. We have to get to it! The world needs to know what happened here. And what happens if you're late? A school bus will come and collect us. <laughs> if you are late, you die. gets better and better. <laughs>
everybody has the right to bear and, and buy weapons anytime, even psychos uh, without gun control, then the NAA should be not allowed to exist anymore and they should get removed. And if that doesn't happen, then it's exactly proving the point that they are uh, criminals and that they bought the politics who make that politics happen and all that politics who are still against gun control and stuff like this should be indicted, should be going to jail, should be sued, etc. From all the families of the survivors, families where children are getting shot in the head from psychos who buys guns on every single incident. It's absolutely, it's so a shame. You should be so ashamed of you, you pieces of shit. You're like not, not worth the dirt uh, you're standing on. You know, so, and that's my personal message to fucking Wayne de la Pierre. If I ever see you, you put your gun down and fucking pummel you into the ground, you fucking piece of shit, asshole, Wayne de la Pierre, whatever your fucking name is from the NRA. You know, you retarded, white, trash, fucking assholes. Goodbye. I do not like them. Sam, I am. Not guilty. This is why I love Canada, even in the shitty weather. And Daisy too. I love it to be like alone. Here's nobody in the wilderness. I'm walking my dog. Hello? It's happening again. I don't believe it. To track down an ancient evil. They have been trained to hunt it. Never done. Equipped to kill it. It's just the beginning. Now they just have to survive it. Alone in the dark, rated R. You know the restaurant website where you look into like Yelp. Yelp.com, uh, where you check out what hotels, what restaurants, whatever you, you go in the city. And they're just completely fucking corrupt assholes, nothing else. Like, I, I, I have that restaurant Bauhaus here, I guess, town in Vancouver. And they contacted us and said, like, um, because there were a lot of good reviews about our restaurant on Yelp, but they didn't publish them. So they said, you want some advertising going, you pay us and we do some advertising for you. And then also we release that negative reviews. Then we paid the advertising 
what well, was shit by the way and then uh, they never released the good reviews but they released every single bad reviews about us got published right away even from people that never wrote a Yelp review before and then they said oh we have an algorithm like a computer decides what reviews getting up and what reviews don't get up and then I did some research but there are restaurants where all the reviews are up or they have 100 reviews and only two were holding back so in our case, we got like 13 reviews published and half of them are really bad, even from people that, as I said, never wrote a review before. Or some guy, for example, reviewed Kentucky Fried Chicken before and gave it four out of five stars and we got two out of five. By the way, I have the only Michelin star chef working in Canada uh, uh, right now and our uh, food and restaurant is, of course, absolutely high end. So it's totally absurd. And then I said, okay, I'm not paying you anymore. They're getting monthly fees for bookings and shit like this. So I stopped paying. Then they never released any more reviews about uh, the restaurant. Even if they say in writing that they cannot infiltrate, they cannot stop the computer releasing what the computer filters out. So I think that they should actually stop the computer at one point, use their brain and say, okay, why is here like 25 reviews? are non-published on Yelp right now and 21 are five star reviews we have and nobody and they don't publish it and they said the computer holds them back what is completely absurd because we're the only restaurant what has double amount of reviews not published as as I said 13 published 26 not published that is completely absurd and never saw any other restaurant I did my research. So basically Yelp is an absolutely corrupt piece of shit organization, nothing else. And it's uh, uh, ridiculous that they're getting away with it. I read up, they have like class action lawsuits going and they, they even won a few because nobody could prove the betrayal and the fraud they are. But I strongly recommend to ignore Yale, uh, Yelp at all. And just if you want good information about restaurants, just uh, just Google it and read the reviews also on the website of restaurants or TripAdvisor is really good. But Yelp, completely fucking corrupt assholes, nothing else. You tend to look at us as if the same sort of laws and rules that apply to the outside apply in there. They don't. They simply don't. Come oh, on, man, this is a hierarchy here. And you're at the bottom, right? The decision has already been made. You've already done it. Have you ever heard of group psychosis? Don't stress out, man. Your heart's going. Just calm down. Alright. Come on, man. We just wanted to see him suffer. Ten. Nine. No. Eight. We're finished. What are you gonna do? U.S. journalists getting there, right. and we have real Sudanese refugees playing their stories. So we have women, they got raped no, in real, no, no, no. and now they're getting raped in the movie again. I know. So, yeah. So, what I'm saying, that what then is the motivation for this password, especially making Brendan uh, personable? Uh, wouldn't that, I mean, to me, if I'm liking this guy a lot, <coughs> 
I would think that, oh, maybe he's got a point. I don't, that would not make me not want to go. I know, because he has a point. You know, I may also postal. And I may see, and I, uh, so the thing like, it's, I, I don't think you can do only like Steven Spielberg endings for the rest of your world. You know, uh, 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 I, I think it's important to show like various ideas, but to do it consequent, to do it radical. And, and I think Rampage, also the stoic movie, the jail movie, you would also maybe say it makes no sense at all, uh, because we just show what happened in the jail cell. But I think it, if, you, if you bring something on screen, uh, what in a way make you make you think about it or make you make you discuss about it? I don't think rampage is brainless uh, action. I think in rampage is way more where people start talking about. It. I think this is the first. Uh, it's always a good a uh, good thing. Do you know? Do you think it's irresponsible? No. 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 Because it, th this would be uh, you know the thing is like if you have the typical Hollywood movies we're getting every week from the studios including the horror movies, yeah? Uh, they always are structured with the same, almost the same system, what is behind it. You know, I just saw Body of Lies, for example, Russell Crowe, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. I, it, it, it is an okay movie, it's not a, a bad movie, but why they save Leonardo DiCaprio? You know, the last second before the guy like hits the knife at him, they save him because it's Hollywood, because it's test screenings, because we have to do it this way. Uh, the good guy has to survive whatever, you know. And I, uh, as, as independent filmer, normally I, I think you have to put the finger in the wound. You have to put, you have to do something else. You have to show a different point of view. You have to show a different ending. You have to, uh, uh, you cannot like, why I should do mainstream movies, you know. Like in US, nothing comes in the theaters anymore what doesn't have a major attached from the beginning on. All the major companies are not acquiring movies anymore. You know, in, uh, in Toronto or whatever, like, there are 400 movies running, and then they acquire three movies, and you will see, like, they bury that movies on tap print release. And this is the film industry right now. The film industry is manufactured movies, 15 movies per studio a year. You get the same shit over and over again. And the shame is that... In, is that the people just walk in based on 40, 50, 60 million PNA every week. You know, this is the thing what, what we could talk tomorrow about it, for example, that it's like it got so much more expensive to release movies that independents have just no chance. This is the reason that even an MGM has 5 billion uh, as, as, a, as a mini studio or the Weinsteins are almost bankrupt, even if Inglourious Bastards. What was a very good Tarantino movie? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's funny, you know, but they still go down the drain because they cannot afford it anymore. Or Lionsgate or something. We we are in a situation right now where the independents are dying, and uh, Bob Yari is dead. Like not dead, but he he's not <laughs> making movies. And tons of people. Like if you really look into the facts now, the, the, like the typical. Like higher end independent movie, shot on 35, 10 million budget, 50 million budget, 20 million, it's not existing anymore. The people just cannot afford it anymore because nobody gets a theatrical release anymore. And without theatrical release, you don't get the foreign theatrical releases. So, and, and, and then, then you have only direct to DVD product. And it's a shame because I think that there is audience for independent movies, but if you don't know that a movie is existing, nobody goes in, you know? It's, uh, it's not so much that the people are not interested, I think it's just that people have no clue that there are a lot of good independent movies existing. This one big uh, uh, yeah, uh, kudos to Tim. For example, no, that this kind of festivals, like made by people, they, they want movies, they love movies. You know? uh, uh, no, but, but, but I think this kind of festivals are the only chance, chance uh, right now to see interesting movies on screen. Because tons of, uh, maybe the best movies every year, are direct to DVD titles, you know. And, and, uh, uh, and in the movie theaters, you just have over and over the same movies, and then the five to ten really good movies every year, uh, they, they of course getting uh, then the Oscars and so on, where, uh, sometimes, and uh, where, where you think like, oh, this was, there will be blood, for example, great movie, yeah. Uh, so, but, but this kind of movies are super rare that they uh, and, and they lost money with There Will Be Blood, so there would be no other movie like like this, you know. Yeah.